Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Kennedy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So by the title of the video, you probably already know that today's goal is to make my own doormat. Now, I saw a ton of other tutorial videos, but they all were using like a Cricut or Silhouette and I don't have any of those things. So this is about to be real, real DIY. So if you guys would like to see how that goes for me, stay tuned. All right, so I went ahead and picked up my doormat from Lowe's. I also, I also got a plant because it's me. You know, I had to get a plant. So now I need to pick up some like stencils and paint um, so that I can actually paint my stuff. So let's keep it pushing. Okay, so let's start things off with our tools. And I am outside, so sorry if you hear background noise. But I have obviously my doormat. Um, I got the like sponge type, the sponge type paint brushes. Um, I'll be using a measuring tape and sharpie to like mark things off. Um, these are the paints that I got for my actual lettering. I'm gonna use this like dark brown it's called burnt umber um and then for like accent stuff i'm gonna be using a mix of these i haven't exactly decided how i want to mix things but we'll see how that goes but i'm going for like a warm vibe overall and then i got these at the store but the more i look at it and look at the size of the lettering I don't really like the font and I think that these letters are going to be too big for what I want to put on here. So I think I'm just going to freestyle it honestly um, and I'm not too bothered by that because like I have good handwriting and I like have a history of kind of making my own fonts and things so it doesn't stress me out to freestyle but if you are wanting to like have something to trace I would say to print something out and then cut out and just kind of like trace it that way. Just print it out, cut out the letters so that you can trace them and then paint. But I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna go for it. So we're gonna see how that goes. Okay y'all, so here you will see me trying to um, use this marker to trace out the like half circle I'm doing. That literally did not work at all. Um, so I quickly realized that that wasn't gonna work and we had to switch to paint. So I essentially just used the tape measure to measure out like how far I would want my um, half circle to go and then I used the paintbrush to kind of dab out where that outline was going to be. Um, I had to go over it a couple of times just to be able to see everything but this ended up working out. So here I'm using that khaki color to um, start to paint in that half circle that I'm doing. Um, so you'll see that I'm kind of dabbing into the doormat because this is a super coarse type of um, texture and obviously it doesn't paint very well so you're gonna have to kind of dab the paint into the actual mat um, and it takes up a lot of paint. It took up so much paint in fact that I ended up running out of the one bottle that I had gotten stupidly I don't know why I only got one um, and ended up having to go back to the store and get two more so <laughs> let's move on and here I am back with more paint some wine and feeling refreshed and ready to finish up this half circle Now when it comes to measuring out this mat so I can have my letters in the place that I want them, it takes a little bit of brain power. So first, we see that this mat is gonna be 30 inches total across. Um, and I knew that the characters I need would take up nine spaces. So I wanted to work with the middle 27 inches so that everything would be nice and easily divisible. 
This meant having to mark off one and a half inches from each side. So as I said, it was 30 inches total. I marked off an inch and a half for each side so that I could be working with the middle 27 inches. After marking my sides um, horizontally, I then measured the vertical and that is 18 inches um, and I wanted my letters to be 6 inches tall so that meant that um, like everything was easily divisible by 3 so I was going to mark off the bottom third which is 6 inches and the top third which is 6 inches so that I could have that middle section so that my letters would all be 6 inches tall. After that, I then marked off every three inches so that I could have those nine spaces for my letters because as I said, I marked off 27 inches in the middle. I'm using nine spaces total so that everything can be three inches of space. Once I had everything marked off, I did decide to go ahead and put more tape um, for every letter to have like the same amount of space in between. That's kind of optional, it depends on how close you want your letters to be together, but I like that this would make sure that everything was nice and evenly spaced. Um, and here you just see me starting to form my letters. Um, so let's, let's watch me attempt to have this nice clean handwriting. Ooh, and here comes the most satisfying part. Let's watch this tape peel. Now that my lettering's done, I'm mixing up this like red and yellow um, to make a nice warm, kind of like burgundy-ish orange color. Um, and I'm just kind of mixing that to my liking so that I can start doing my designs. Um, so I didn't really have a solid plan of what I was gonna do. I just knew that I wanted some kind of like wavy type idea over here on the side. Um, it honestly turned out kind of looking almost like a zebra pattern, but you know, just go for it. Just do what your heart desires. So to finish off my designs, I just used that yellow um, to make some vertical lines up in the top corner. Um, and that was the last thing I did design wise, but you can really add as much or as little as you want. I 
ended up filling in the O's because I just liked it better that way. But this is the finished product. Let me know what you guys think.